course so uh, yeah. <laughs> We must all those bands you saw them for. Uh, do you have any pre gig rituals? Do you have anything to psych yourself into well, a show? Tom, Tom usually has a gelato before every show. Otherwise, I just can't. A bit of poison. I don't know what I'm going to eat. Oh, okay. <laughs> John, John, he's already had an outside shoelaces. And, uh. Put your hands back on, sir. What do you do, Phil? No way. Uh, free gig film usually, um. does something very individual. Yeah. We never know what he's doing anyway. And, uh. <laughs> We just make sure that we're all there in time for the get to really What was the first ever you had in your life? It was a high school band. It was a boy at TAB, a And our parents walked us, and a few, off, a, a few teachers, a few teachers walked past and kind of went funny to like this, and it was a bit clear area so in front of the band. And everybody else was going to the school fair behind us. Where I come from? That was our first kid. How old were you? Seven. About fifteen. Seven. I I didn't. I wasn't even playing bass. I don't think it's on scene. Carl may not have even sprouted his first pubic hair by then. Describe she had in four words. This is called Do What You Want To Do. What is it? Birthday. <laughs>
Collins. If you're not a team, you're not a team. <laughs> wait, wait. We're going to do the Saturday Night Fever Walk. Can you get it off my feet? <laughs> They turn themselves into a whirlpool, mid-song, and they have just people getting sucked into it. Always in the quiet bits. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's not crazy. I'm pretty damn crazy. <laughs> have you got the other plans to record soonish? Yeah. Um, I think we're going to do some demos pretty soon. A couple of weekends time. And... Are you going to do an album or are you going to do a pissy little EP again? Oh, he's going to be the full thing. Yes! Well, that's all we want. Yeah. Yes. Maybe um, oh, we've got a single coming out. If we can. Oh, right. Yeah. So we've already recorded for that. Is that a 7 inch or a CD single? Yeah, yeah 7 inch. Yeah, that's 7 inch. Possibly yeah. one song. Possibly one with the yeah, and possibly one song with the K as well. Yeah. What would you like me just to be? That's what I was. When are you going to hop on the punk rock bandwagon? Oh, we tried to. We're right. in oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that new song's really good. Pretty punk. The fast ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find yourself being sandwiched between two punk rock bands? Oh, I think it's it's intimidating, actually. I think it was. I think it made us play really fast. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
the showgrounds with Silverchair, like how was it trying to convey what you do to that many people? Hard, yeah. it's weird. It's pretty far, but it was a spin out. Yeah. see real, it was so big. Do you reckon many people got it? <laughs> uh, I reckon a few, maybe, you know, but maybe more people did it. Yeah. I think I've met a lot of people who sort of only ever seen us at that show before. Oh, right. They're into it. And they say, so where do you see us? And they say, oh, they used to show up like it. So it must have been so effective. So <laughs> what would you think if, say, the average person, that, so yeah, like the average yacht like, would have walked in, you know, as far as the silver chair, the triple M or whatever, and walked in and saw you guys? <laughs> oh, all right. Hopefully, Hopefully you wouldn't have made it fun. Hopefully you'd make it I don't know about what, but <laughs> <laughs> make it just not go just over. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> That's the best sort of reaction you get, I reckon. Yeah. yeah, people just go, what the fuck? Yeah. I don't think we're good enough to be that big. <laughs> Maybe the boredoms or something. Yeah, it's really good way out as far as those sort of people go, it's like the hard rock to go or whatever. It's good to make it go right. Yeah, so. I suppose they like playing with the boredoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. interesting. That was the best music experience of my life. Seeing yeah. yeah. them four times in three days, they were amazing. That'd be a good lead into that boredom footage you've got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Australia, what, what's Australia been to you? Do you have you enjoyed it? Beautiful. Beautiful. Do you, um, do you think that the audience enjoyed it tonight? I'm, I'm sure they did. But... I think like, uh, audience enjoyed it, but then like we didn't put enough energy to it today, I guess. Oh. actually coming into Red Eye when I was about 14 or something and I was looking in the avant-garde section I actually most of the stuff I didn't know what it was but there was one CD that really stuck out this Japanese CD and it was this artist called Mertzbau who's like a very renowned noise guy he's been doing it for years and um, I said to the owner what's this and he just said noise I said what do you mean he just said it's just noise like the whole way
action. I mean, you get <clears throat> bands like Oasis that all these people jump on and go, wow, this is great. But for every like 20 people that think that's amazing, there's another 10 people that think it sounds like status quo or something, you know, just go, this is shit. What else is there, you know? So I think people getting into boring shit like that makes people sort of look for harsher stuff almost. It's like a, an opposite reaction or something. So there seems to be heaps of people getting into it these days. Lots of young people, lots of kids coming in going, Oh, you know, what's, what weird shit do you have, you know? I'm sick of everything. There's only so much punk rock you can take. Well, I think it's just an extension of punk rock, you know? Yeah. It's just got that, it's just taking it a step further, you know? It's just, um, you know, if punk rock was like, fuck, you know, who cares if we can't play very well and we don't have much technique, you know, and at the same time of, you know, the anarchy and the anger and the, the violence, it's just taking it you know, step further to its logical conclusion. <laughs> like a, a kind of a fine line between the music and like the performance art that goes with it? Yeah, definitely. Um, for some things. I mean, probably in Australia. So in Japan, they're probably more into the sound, whereas Australia is more connected to performances. Because you've got people like Lucas, who's like very visual, you know. You, you, if you don't see blood at one of his shows, it's probably, you know, a fluke. <laughs> Yeah, I guess, yeah, it's hard to say, but yeah, there's definitely a lot of performance art in Australia as far as veering into the noise. It seems that, like in Japan they've more got cheap electronics and they concentrate on just sitting at home getting sounds, whereas in Australia it's more like, the, the, the sound more sort of comes after the idea of, you know, the performance, like, oh, we're going to get these samurai swords and light them up and, you know, things like that, you know. It's more like the performance comes first and they see what sounds come out. Jesus. 
That's our first song. Get up! How can I tell my friends that I couldn't rise from the dead because I was constipated? They just say, take a laxative and hope you don't find your grave out. And that's when I discovered Metamucil. Metamucil. Uh, Mildred! Thanks, see you later. Wouldn't be good, see you later. Thanks so much, boys. FBI, all the other community radio stations at 80. Ice Rock is what you're trying to say. Take it away, mate. And that's true. And the second time, we had these little red and green cherry onions. They so were cherries, so we all gobbled them. And they were fucking onions. And they were red and green. Why green. did we get red and green for the onions? Davis had a tantrum. I it's had to come in. It affected our down. performance. It was bad. That's our final step story. Thank you. Hey, um, what's your favourite thing about being in front of the loader? Well, it's meant thus far that, you know, that I haven't had to get a real job. Uh, I uh, enjoy the company of the other three lads involved in the organisation. Uh, it means I've got to see far more of Australia than I ever would have otherwise, and some parts of overseas as well. And, uh, 
It's a vehicle for my creative expression. It's right. <laughs> Oh, really? To write a tune and get some guys that know what they're doing to play it with you, it's a fine thing. Isn't that Sydney Uni Band competition. No, no. Coach, Coach Party was third. <laughs> yeah. The heat of the Sydney Uni Band competition. We played every song that we had in two covers and we only just made 30 minutes. And we won. And we've gone on to be winners ever, ever since. <laughs> Richard, don't forget to sign this big okay? Okay, thanks, Davis. Do you have any advice for, say, an up and coming band, a band that was just starting out? Yeah, give up now. Stop now. Just go back to university, get a real job. Okay? Do what your parents have always said. Forget being in a band because it's a fucking joke. You'll hate it. Give up now. Describe uh, the audience that goes and sees you every Saturday afternoon at the Sando. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely drunk. <laughs> Ever had any stage divers? <laughs> um, yeah, we had a guy tackle the chicken wire. <laughs> Of an emu wire, but um, yeah, none from um, off the stage as yet, only into the stage. Only into the stage, okay. Um, will you ever like release a CD, a record, or anything like that? Or is it a bit hard when you do just come? No, we want to get a seven inch out sometime this year, yeah. but um, we've got one original which we might be thinking of doing, if not, we just uh. Release. <laughs> release the cover. Could you ever see it? Hey, <laughs> have you ever put a seven inch out before? Regularly. <laughs> is wearing, hat wearing an art, is it an art form you think? It's not an art form, but some heads are better than others. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think your persona changes a lot when, you, when you're doing the hat. Well, see, a lot of people don't realise that hats are flexible, you can shape them. Yourself, right? Okay. So you're putting a bit of yourself into the hat. I don't know whether you'd call it an art form, but more your personality coming through. It's, your it's hat. A, it is an expression, though. I think definitely an expression. That's why I'm borrowing Dave's. <laughs> <laughs> I think I expressed a bit too much in the last one. <laughs>
the other members disperse for Jesus in a couple of words each. Great budget, guys, each. Is that <laughs> it? <laughs> great budget. Great bunch of guys, what can you say? They're just a great bunch of guys. All of them. One. No favouritism whatsoever. Just a great bunch of guys. A couple of words to describe each member individually. Robbie, great drummer. Dave, great bass player. Kane, great front man. Matt, what a guy. Great guitarist. I'm the odd man out. Leave it on that note. <laughs>
<laughs> and why did you mind that man? name, the mass, the mass man with your car offensive? <laughs> I don't know the reason I'm offensive at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I can just kick him like that. <laughs> Oh, nice. I don't know what I was talking about. Your car, must. You used to get so pissed off. Oh, muscle about. car. Must. Take the mask. Get the mask going, mate. Yeah. Hey, what's my what it's like to be a mutant chimp boy? <laughs> um. An alien. Um, and related that's... to Pollyanna. That's not fair, because <laughs> <laughs> it all ties into my question. <laughs> oh, um, my, my question. I don't know. It's pretty good, actually. <laughs> Life's damn good as an alien chip boy. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay, introduce yourself. Okay, introduce yourself. Alright, we're Crank, how's it going? Um, I'm Lyle. Alan and I play bass. Lyle plays guitar. Play guitar. And he plays uh, the I'll saxophone. I play guitar. No, play the saxophone drums. <laughs> <laughs> started out um, literally just as a fun thing um, you know we, we thought oh we'll play a few gigs in Sydney you know feedback 
um, Sandringham, and then uh, Sean from No Deal Records um, saw us practice. And he goes, oh, when you guys are ready, you know, we'll, we'll put a 7-inch out. And, and that was like, oh, a year ago. Yeah. And, and we thought, oh, cool, okay, we'll do a 7-inch, and that's about it. But then we got a record deal, and you know, things started happening. So we just weren't looking for it to actually go anywhere, but, you know, it's, we're having fun doing it. Any, any other sort of Spinal Tap type experiences? Um, oh, <laughs> we got food poisoning. <laughs> yeah, they got, they got food poisoning. I didn't yeah, know. So we funny. had some bad lentil potato thing of shit. Crap. From some place called the Potato it, Man. Or yeah, yeah don't go to the Potato Man in Richmond. <laughs> the, first, <laughs> the first trip was in the middle of summer, and um, we all got yeah. shit-faced drunk on oh, a Friday night yeah, at Oxide. Awesome. It was really drunk. And we, we danced went, around naked. Yeah, we all went to Nigel's. Dance floor. Nigel's <laughs> <laughs> we went to Nigel's house from Mindsnare and, um, and jumped in his swimming pool at 5.30, 6, no, 6 30 in the morning and the neighbours come out so we all stood there nude going Ooh! and we jumped off the neighbours really high fence. And me and Matt from Mindsnare put um, chrysanthemums or, or, or what was it, some flowers, chrysanthemums? Oh, daisies. Daisies yeah, in our bum, che bum cheeks <laughs> and jumped off this big ball in the pool nude. It was so funny. And, and, yeah, yeah, that was a real dirty party. Yeah. Fun. And then we yeah. broke into broke into Camberwell swimming pool and swam in the pool and that they had nudie had a nudie bench. That's what um, all touring bands do anyway. Okay, another song.
Kim works a mechanical engineer and uh, nine to five, five days a week. Mm. That's so the only way we could uh, afford to, to um, put our albums, our first two albums were bankrolled by Kim and me. Right. Okay. 
It, do you find it hard when it comes to touring, getting yeah. time off work? And stuff? Yeah, my work gets a little bit difficult about it. I take a lot of time off in lieu and then I have to pay it back later. So, consequently, the other week I was doing something like um, working till 10 o'clock each night, working on the weekends. And then when it came to play the other night, I felt like an engineer playing music instead of a musician who's an engineer. Um, it is rather schizophrenic, but I'm hoping to stop that next year when I leave work. Yeah. Not because we're making a lot of money, it's just my <laughs> decision. And coming up next, Lance Mouth, featuring... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I had like every name of the band going through my head at the one time. Okay, can we start again? Yeah, <laughs> good. I hate working with amateurs. <laughs> I was going to call him Matthew Galvin. Okay. And coming up next, Lance Mouth, featuring... 
Matt. <laughs> oh, you want me to go through the whole band? <laughs> oh, no, just single one out. <laughs> I thought we were like tandem. Oh, yeah, okay. Do you want to do tandem? <laughs> All right. Are we, are we yeah. brave enough to do the tandem? Right. Um, now all the names. No, no I don't. What's the <laughs> Matt, name? Matt, Gina, Derek, and... <laughs> That's cool. Glenn. Glenn. Matt, Gina, Derek, and Glenn. Matt, Gina, Derek, and Glenn. Matt, Gina, Derek, and Glenn. <laughs> so I've got Matt, I've got Matt, Derek, you've got Gina, Glenn. No, I want to do Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> so I'll, I'll do Matt and Glenn. Okay. So you'll do. You ready? What am I doing? Matt, Glenn, Gina, Gina, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> ready? Yeah. Where are you rolling? Matt, Jen, Derek. Gina Derry, <laughs> Matt Jen, Matt, Matt Glenn, Matt Glenn <laughs> Derry Gina, <laughs> Matt Glenn Derry Gina, Matt Jen, Matt Jen, Matt Jen, Jen Jerry, Jerry Garcia. You're not allowed to wear it backwards ever again. Did you get that? Yeah. Oh, do you want to just take away that? Yeah, do a proper one as well. Okay. And coming up next, Lawrence Mel featuring Matthew Allison, Gina, Derek Winterman, and the other bloke. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do Derek. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get Matt and Glenn. What do you say, Matt Allison? Please, Dave Stump for the last name of everyone else. Um, Gina Monaco bar. <laughs> Surely that, that... I don't know what Derek's last name is. No. Okay. Glenn, I'll, I'll, stop a, I'll stop a Christian name. <laughs> Stupid man. Yeah? Are we ready? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and coming up next, Lawn Smell featuring Matt, Gina, Glenn, <laughs> And the drummer. I keep on wanting to say Derek Mann so hard. Okay. Oh, no, I don't want to say Derek, I want to say the drummer. You want to say the drummer? Yeah. <laughs> the drummer. Oh, cool. Coming then up you next, Lawn Smell featuring Matt, Gina, Matt, Glenn, Gina, 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 He's currently employed as a guitar technician for a midget who are currently on stage, so while he's here on the phone, I don't understand. He should be there. So, I think this, I think this little episode epitomises Tweezer, you know, they, they kind of commit to something and then just wander off halfway through it because they don't care. It's just <laughs> devastating. And keep trying to convince them that everything's alright even though they've got no idea what's yeah, going on. Yeah, look, I've got, I've got to the end of the next song, so it's cash. <laughs> what if something blows up? What if they you need it? Tweeze it to it too. Um the strings could be breaking as well. Yes, yeah, well, I better get back there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see you later. Yeah, so what what does she do? She's probably worms in that now. Oh. So I don't she like died. 40 hours. Yeah. But so someone was saying that there was a complaint about sloppy. <laughs> yeah, um crazy drama, hey. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 I should have.